Okay. Uh, so we are looking at some of this work which came out of Yale University, uh, uh, supervised by Roger Shank and some of his colleagues. And this material that I have been presenting, it's from this book called Inside Computer Understanding by Roger Shank and Christopher Liesbeck. Okay. So in the last class, we looked at, we were looking at frames, and then we saw that scripts was an example of frames, uh, which basically captured stereotypical situations. But then we also saw that there were certain kind of stories that you could not understand uh, using scripts in the sense that not everything can be understood using scripts. Uh, and then what this group did produce was uh, a mechanism by which they would reason about plans and goals of other people essentially. So, let us look at this program which is called uh, plan applier mechanism. So, like that was called SAM, this is called PAM and this was written by Robert Wilensky as part of his PhD thesis. So, scripts is what we saw earlier, they basically capture stereotypical situations and SAM used to read stories in top down predictive manner and the program that we saw uh, had stories about uh, uh, plane crashes, train wrecks, oil spills and state visits. So, out of which we had seen one vehicle accident story and we had seen one state visit story. Now, situations were bigger than scripts uh, and later as we said the idea of memory organization packets came up. And as basically a script is a large pattern of connected conceptualizations with various roles and props essentially. So, roles are basically animated animate characters and props are inanimate characters essentially. And it used to provide pre stored expectations about what will be read next essentially. So, typically you know for example, if you go to a restaurant what happens, if you go to a movie theater what happens and so on and so forth. But we are looking for something which is finer, which will be able to reason about why did an agent do something or why did an actor in the story do something essentially. So, situations and scripts and even scenes which were parts of scripts are all too encompassing essentially. So, the number of possible goal interactions are simply too many to write about. We will talk about goal interactions today. Episodes or events on the other hand are too primitive essentially. So, what we need is some intermediate level of representation which allows us to reason about intentions of people essentially. Hmm. So, let us look at an example. So, if you have if you listen to this story or this line essentially that John wanted to impress his date essentially. Now, at this moment you can see that it is it is practically impossible to predict what is likely to happen next essentially. But if you read this second line, it says that he called up his friend Bill and asked him if he could borrow his Cadillac. Then, if you are a knowledgeable person, you can predict that John is probably used to the car to pick up his date. And if you know that that is a way of impressing people driving an expensive car or something. And, and secondly, you are assuming that the second sentence is connected to the first essentially. So, whenever you read something, you expect that it is coherent and connected essentially. And all you are trying to do is to establish the connection between the two statements. So, we are looking at a approach which will be able to try to make these connections in a non stereotypical fashion in the sense that it is not as if there is a standard script in for example, going out on a date. So, you would need a script which says date with a in which with a car date with something else and so on and so forth. So, we do not want that kind of a thing. Here is another story. We say John needed some money for a down payment of the house and he called his sister. What is the connection between these two? Essentially? Hmm. Now, again you do not expect that there is a paying for the house script essentially which tells you what are the sequence of actions you must do. And you must realize that the key thing in the first line is that there is a need for money essentially. John wants money for something that is the important part of the sentence. The money could have been for any purpose, it could have been for a daughter's education, for paying off a bookie. Uh, or a hospital bill or both. So, we need to understand the intentions of actors essentially. So, people have goals and people have plans which are means to achieve those goals and people do actions in the real world which, uh, which, which are part of those plans essentially. So, essentially we want to talk about goals and plans and actions of people essentially. So, we are talking about 
knowledge essentially. Okay. So, we are saying that typically you know for example, uh, if you want to uh, if you are hungry then you may have certain plans that you always use you know you always maybe go to the canteen or go to Guru Nath or go to some other place or, or maybe even cook yourself and this thing. So, people have plans so, and essentially we are trying to figure out what are the plans that people have essentially. So, actions are to be related to goals. So, look at this story John needed money for a down payment and he called up his sister this is a story we saw we can sort of infer that he has a plan to borrow money from his sister essentially. Hmm. So, actions are related to goal plans and plans are related to goals and so on. So, there is a connection as you can see if you have a goal you may have a plan for which you may have a sub goal for which you may have a sub plan of which an action may be a part essentially. So, if you if you are if you know that a person has a goal and if you hear about an action. So, for example, John needed money essentially and then the action is that he called up his sister we want to find the chain of reasoning that connects the first sentence to the second sentence. In this example it could be simply that he had a um, he had a plan to borrow money and calling up the sister was part of that plan essentially. Hmm. So, PAM is a program which basically tries to uncover these kind of relations. So, let us look at a couple of more stories. So, John wanted to become a foreman and he went to get some arsenic. Now, that is a story which is not so easy to understand the connection is not so obvious unless you know little bit more about John for example or John was hungry and he took out the yellow pages. Now, that is not so difficult to understand because if you know that yellow pages may contain information about restaurants, but what about John was hungry and he took out popular mechanics what is the possible connection between John was hungry and he took out popular mechanics. It is difficult to understand that story or, he, or the first story that we discussed here John wanted to become a foreman he went to get some arsenic what could be a possible connection between these two things. So, some stories are of course, simpler to understand some are a little bit harder and Pam can understand some of the simpler of those stories. It really depends on what is the knowledge that Pam has. So, what does Pam know about the kind of plans that people have to achieve the kind of goals that they may have essentially. So, essentially PAM's knowledge consists of different kinds of goals and the plans that that can be used to. So, these are stored plans these are not produced on the fly or something. So, it is like a plan box or it is stored in the memory essentially and what and, and what are the actions which are part of the plan. So, with all this knowledge it is trying to basically relate what it hears with some goal and plan situation. So, here is a goal uh, they call it a delta goal these are sort of uh, goals which keep occurring essentially and we have said that goals have plans essentially. So, there is a goal called D control which means you want to get control of something. So, John wanted a book or John wanted some money or John wanted something that then we say that he has a D control type of a goal essentially. And what the kind of knowledge that Pam has is that if you want something which which obviously, somebody else has. So, here we are talking about interaction between people here then there is a whole series of plans essentially. So, so you could ask that person give me that thing or you could explain you could say that uh, I want to use a bicycle because I want to go to the gate and buy something or you could bargain and you could say that if you do if you give me this I will give you something else or something else or you could threaten essentially or you could simply overpower or if you have one of those characters you could just take it quietly and go away essentially. So, these are six different plans for getting hold of something. So, the plans so, these are these are kind of the plans that Pam knows about essentially. So, Pam will always try to explain if somebody wants something. Uh, and if somebody does an action it will try to explain it in terms of one of these six plans essentially. Hmm. Now, one thing is that if you are modeling characters and some of the work which this group did uh, was also in story writing which we will we will not get into, but one of the other students of Shank his name was James Meehan he wrote a program called tailspin maybe you should just look up 
for tailspin if you are interested on the web. So, that was a program which generated stories. So, it invented characters or you had to tell the characters and then it would invent a story for it. So, it would give some goals to some characters and then you know say what happens and so on and so forth. So, if you have knowledge about some domain or some world, you can either use it to understand stories or you can use it even to generate stories or you could even use it to generate actions essentially. If you want to for example, get a plan to do something then you could use this, it, it would be like memory based planning essentially. So, the set of plans that a person has and the order in which they are tried could be traits of a person's character. So, if you have these six possible plans, we can look at combinations of this, which person uses which plans essentially. So, they could define uh, different kinds of people essentially. So, I will give you some examples and you can have a look at them. So, there are some personality types you might say. So, this is something no doubt you are familiar with, you probably have a friend who keeps asking till you relent or there is another which says that you explain and then you explain and then you threaten or you ask and you beg and then you bargain essentially. You should try and guess what kind of characters these are. So, or you threaten or you threaten and then you explain. So, so that those three or four boxes means that you try those plans in that particular order top to down or you ask and then you explain and then you quit or you ask and then you overpower or you threaten and then you explain and then you overpower and one last one that you simply steal the thing essentially. So, there are different ways different kinds of people would try different approaches to this thing and you could if you want to write a program to generate stories, uh, you could produce different kinds of characters and then produce actions which are consistent with their character and you know that kind of stuff essentially. So, what are the names you can give or what kind of people we are talking about here. So, the last one is of course, the easiest it is simply a thief, he wants something and he just goes and steals it. The first one is persistent, typically you have a friend who is very persistent, let us go and eat out, let us go and eat out till you know. I mean it is not about de control, but still or they or one could be a bully essentially and but if you if you counter threaten the bully then they will try to explain why they did something or it could be a superpower essentially which nowadays maybe we do not have superpowers, but still or a mugger if you happen to go to some cities in the US then you somebody told me once it is better to carry 10 dollars around essentially you know otherwise your life could be in danger. Then we have a parent and children behavior, parents try to explain to the child and then you know if the child still does not listen then they may use a threat or something. The child on the other hand will ask and beg and eventually try to bargain. So, if you give me this ice cream I will study hard in the evening or something like that actually. Hmm? There is one which I have not given a name to maybe you can think of something. So, typically one observes actions, typically goals and plans are not stated explicitly essentially. What you see is action, you see somebody moving towards you or something like that essentially. So, goals and plans are typically part of the knowledge that people carry in their heads essentially. They are not often stated explicitly essentially and instead what we see is a sequence of actions if you are acting in the real world. For example, if you are designing a game playing program then the game playing agent has only access, access to your keystrokes essentially. So, it does not know what is your what is the goal that you have or what is the plan that you have, it can only see what keystrokes you are pressing the actions that you are using keystrokes and based on that if it is a smart game playing program or intelligent game playing program it would try to infer what you are trying to do and try to produce a counter plan or something like that essentially. So, an intelligent game playing agent would need to understand your intentions from them essentially. Now, goals can have interaction. So, let us look at different kinds of interactions between goals. One possibility is that okay. so, very often in the real world it is not that you have one goal and one agent trying to solve or achieve that goal essentially. So, there are many agents 
and they have they may have many goals essentially. So, if you are talking about one agent and one goal you simply need to find an optimal plan and maybe there is a method for doing that, but in real in interesting situations there are multiple goals and one may sometimes have to choose between goals and sometimes solving or or pursuing one goal makes the other goal easier and if there are more than one players then all these interactions become quite interesting. So, let us look at some kind of interactions which may happen between goals. So, there are two kinds of interactions one is between the goals of one person and the other is between the goals of different people essentially. So, and both can be positive or negative. So, one is goal subsumption. So, for example, you may want to do something every day essentially and then you may want to find a better plan for solving that goal. So, for example, John enjoyed drinking hot coffee and he bought a thermos essentially. To understand this story you can see that John is doing something which will sort of make his goal of drinking hot coffee easier and so he has a plan of using a thermos and therefore, he has a goal of having a thermos that is a sub goal and therefore, he has a plan of buying a thermos and therefore, the action that you hear about is basically an action which is part of the plan of buying a thermos. So, at one time we used to go out to book railway tickets. So, this slide I had written at that time. So, Jacob went out to the city to do a medical checkup and while there he also booked his train ticket. So, you often do that if you are going out to see a movie anyway then maybe you do a bit of shopping also and come back and you know this kind of thing. So, solving one goal may provide an opportunity for solving other goals essentially. So, we can talk about goal conflict essentially when a single character have more than one goals which cannot be achieved at the same time. So, here is a small story which is uh, about a student as you can see Pankaj had still not finished the assignment his friends wanted to go and see a movie and sometime later he flunked the course essentially. So, if you want to understand this what is happening in this story you need to un figure out that there is some conflict between goals that Pankaj has in this case one goal is to finish the assignment which in those days me used to mean you have to go to the lab and implement the program. The other goal is to see a movie which means go to the theater and see the movie and both of them have a conflict in the sense that they have a common resource which is time and you do not have enough time to do both the things. So, there is a conflict between these two and you can understand that what, what Pankaj has done is to resolve this conflict in a particular way. So, if somebody asks you the question that did Pankaj see the movie, it is not stated as you can see in the story, you could possibly answer something like yes or probably or something like that, because you know that he flung the course and because he knew that there was a conflict essentially. So, competition is between different characters. So, you remember this story about John wanting to become a foreman, this is something similar. In this case, he wanted to Okay. He wanted to watch the football game, but Mary wanted to watch the Bolshoi ballot and he punched Mary in the mouth and put on the ball game. So, how do you understand this? Again, it is a competition between two players. John wants to watch football. So, he has a plan to switch on the football channel. Mary wants to watch ballet and she has a plan to switch on the ballet channel and obviously, they have only one television. And you can understand that uh, uh, the goal that sub goal that John had was to disable opponent's plan, which somehow is achieved through punching Mary in the mouth, essentially. Hmm. Or sometimes when there are different people, their goals can work positively. So there can be positive goal interaction. So for example. Sukram wanted the new car, Mukesh wanted his papers signed. These are all fictitious characters uh, and some money changed hands essentially. Hmm. So, this is of course, typical in what happens in our great country. Uh, so, Sukram is obviously an official of some kind and Mukesh is a rich person. 
So, they have this plan of bargaining, Mukesh has this plan of bargaining with Sukram and Sukram has this plan of bargaining with Mukesh and saying that Mukesh says I will offer you money and Sukram says okay, if you offer me money I will sign and then both of them sort of live happily ever after. So, these are goals of different people which are working in concord essentially, you know they are supporting each other, I mean they are not uh, antagonistic to each other. So, this program written by Robert Wilensky works with this knowledge about goals and plans and so goals can have different plans. For example, if you are hungry you may have two or three different plans and each of those plans may involve certain sub goals and sub plans and so on and at some level you would be talking about actions essentially. So, this program PAM has got three components, first is a predictive mode, the second is a bottom up mode and third is the incorporation mode. In predictive mode a known goal predicts certain plans and actions. So, if you know that John has a certain goal, then you can predict that John will have certain plan and certain actions and you could basically generate expectations. So, remember whenever it is the moment we started looking at conceptual dependency, we said that understanding is predictive, it is expectation driven that you all you are always expecting something to happen. So, this is a that mode of where it expects certain things to happen. If it knows something, for example, if John wants to as we saw impress his date, then you expect some plan which would be part of something to impress his date or something like that. The bottom up phase on the other hand is that if you are hearing about or seeing something which is not expected, then can you use some kind of knowledge to reason and argue that okay, this action could be part of a this plan and this plan could be part of a this goal and that is what you were expecting. So, this bottom up force goes from what you are listening to or what you are getting and moving towards what you were expecting essentially. And finally, there is an incorporation component just like in scripts uh, in SAM, once you have understood the segment of the story you better create make an explicit representation of that. Uh, so, that is the third phase which is the incorporation uh, component. So, let us look at an example of by Pam and this is a store robbery as you can see. So, most of the people of course, want money for some all the time. So, John wanted some money, he got a gun and walked to the into a liquor store and he told the owner he wanted some money and the owner gave it to him essentially and John left essentially. So, obviously, you read between the lines and that is what Pam is trying to do as to why did the different actions happen in terms of the intentions that the, the people in this case there are two people in the story, the goals that those people have and you know the plans that they use essentially. So, this is the output which John, the Pam has created, why did John get a gun because he wanted to rob the liquor store, it is never said there, why did John threaten the shopkeeper because John needed to get some money, why did the shopkeeper give the money because shopkeeper did not want to get hurt and why did John leave because he did not want to get caught essentially. So, the goal was he wanted money, but the sub goal was that he will use a plan to rob the store and threatening is part of a plan of robbing a store essentially. Then we have long term goals essentially. So, there are two kinds of goals which are one, kind, one the kind of goals which are part of something that you are trying to do immediately like you are hungry or you want some money or you want something, but there are long term goals that you want to be happy, you want to be alive and that kind of stuff. Those will always be there as something which will help you understand the story essentially. Then Pan can produce an output from each of the two protagonist point of view. So, from John's point of view this is a story, I needed to get some dough, so I got myself this gun and walked down the liquor store. I told the shopkeeper that if he did not let me have the money, then I would shoot him. So, he handed it over and then I left essentially. So, that is John's version of the story. You could also and this is produced by Pam, okay. This is not something that we are trying to do it ourselves essentially. Pam can generate a story from the owner's point of view, it says that I was minding the store when a man entered. No, observe that it is smart enough to not use the term John here. He threatened me with a gun and demanded all the cash receipts. Well, I did not want to get hurt, so I gave him the money. Now, we had mentioned in the previous slide 
that they had that the owner had the goal of remaining healthy. So, which is what is stated here he says I did not want to get hurt and he escaped and mining the store is typically what storekeepers would expect to do essentially. Here is a slightly more complicated story. Uh, this one is the one which relates to that four man story that I was telling you about. In this case John wanted to win the stock car race, Bill also wanted to win the stock car race and John being an unsavory character he went and cut Bill's ignition wire essentially. Why did John break the ignition wire? Because he was trying to prevent Bill from racing essentially. So, a character's actions can be understood in terms of preventing the goals of others. We saw John punching Mary because he wanted to see football. We also heard a story about John wanting to be a foreman and then he went and bought some arsenic. At that point we could not figure out why he went wanted arsenic, but now maybe we can make a more informed guess since we know more about John I think so. Here is another story. So, John wanted to, we have seen this it is just a variation John wanted to watch the football game, but he had a paper due next day he won the football game and he failed civics. And Pam can infer that he failed to hand in the assignment essentially. Now, inferences in Pam are made by rules. So, it is a rule based kind of a system uh, and this whole group at Yale used to call their rules as requests essentially. So, it has about uh, 180 rules of this kind that if a character has a goal of possessing an object, then the character probably wants to use that object for its intended purpose essentially. So, for example, if somebody wants a book, then most likely they want to read it or something like that. You know. So, plan Pam has a collection of diff 32 different plan boxes which range from threaten that we have just seen in the liquor store or undo condition which we just saw in the stalker case essentially. So, it is got this kind of knowledge and we can see that Pam is different from Sam in the sense that Sam was searching for a frame which was a matching pattern essentially. So, understanding an input in Sam was equivalent to finding a frame in which the input could be spotted in some sense. So, Sam used to work with you know collections of frames like that essentially. So, that was more like recognition whereas, Pam is trying to generate explanations it can answer questions of why did this person do this, why did John do this or why did John, why did the storekeeper gave money to John. So, that <coughs> called explanation driven understanding. So, Pam at all times maintains a set of predictions to catch input. If some in input fails to meet any expectation, then it find tries to find an explanation for new input essentially. So, we have seen it has a predictive phase and a bottom up phase. So, in the in the explanation finding phase it is going bottom up it is trying to build up inferences and checks whether the inference inferred conceptualizations is predicted. And when something matches then it puts it into the incorporation phase essentially. So, either an input which which Pam is reading matches an expectation or prediction or something that can be abducted. Abducted is a word which is a kind of inference which I do not know whether we have spoken about earlier, but it is a uh, unsound form of inference essentially. So, it is for example, it says that uh, if x causes y then if you see y then you infer x instead of so which is not sound as we have seen essentially. So, that kind of inference is called abduction and, and I might have mentioned that you know doctors typically do this. So, if, if you if you have yellow eyes then maybe you have jaundice essentially. So, that form of reasoning is called abduction and all inferences that are made by Pam are added to the story representation. Okay, so, I will stop here then we will take this up in the next class and we will look at a little bit more detail.